In the first time, a terrible war brought with it the collapse of your ancient empire. So vicious were your enemies that all would have been slaughtered were it not for the collective outcry for mercy. In an effort to soothe relations, the conquerors spared the lives of the defeated. All survivors were sent into exile. Many of you are familiar with the general idea of Homeworld, an exiled race making a perilous journey across the stars to a home planet that once was theirs. But how did the Hagarans become exiled in the first place, and by whom? To properly set the stage of the Homeworld universe, our story will begin not with the Hagarans, but with a far more ancient and powerful race, the Bentuzi. The Bentuzi were a spacefaring people who had discovered a device called a hyperspace core, designed by a far older and long dead species simply known as the Progenitors. With this device, the Bentuzi unlocked the secrets of faster than light travel, allowing them to spread across the galaxy. They were also a generous people with their knowledge, and with each world they visited, they spread the knowledge of hyperspace to each sentient species they came across. Eventually, their relations with the peoples of the galaxy manifested itself into the Outer Rim trade routes, covering hundreds of worlds discovered by the Bentuzi. Decades would pass, and the Bentuzi would only grow in prosperity as more races joined the trade routes and took their places amongst the stars. What was once a collection of isolated worlds scattered throughout space became a thriving intergalactic community. An important point to note is that while the Bentuzi were open with the secrets of hyperdrive, they did not reveal everything to the peoples of the galaxy. The technology given by the Bentuzi only allowed for relatively short jumps across space. While the Bentuzi themselves could theoretically jump from one end of the galaxy to the other with little effort, the scientists of the various unbound races, as the Bentuzi called them, attempted to master the idea of far jump hyperspace, but all came to the same conclusion, that the power requirements would be astronomical and far beyond any of their capabilities. Except for the Bentuzi, of course. The hyperdrive core they originally discovered did not just allow them to travel faster than light, it was the secret of their ability to far jump. While two other cores were rumored to exist, they were simply lost somewhere amid the endless expanse between worlds. Through the use of the far jump technology, the Bentuzi maintained order throughout the galaxy for over 500 years, as one of the promises they made to their trading partners was that they would always be guaranteed peace provided their intentions remained peaceful as well. However, there was always some arrogant warlord or aggrieved peoples who made war with their neighbors. Of course, the power of the Bentuzi was quickly brought down upon these troublemakers. But all was not well in the galaxy. As the Bentuzi influence spread, there were some quiet whispers of dissent that focused on one idea. Why should the Bentuzi dictate to them what they can and can't do in the galaxy? Whispers of an uprising began circulating among the interstellar races, and a plan was enacted by a mysterious leader whose identity has been lost to time. But somehow, this person was able to ignite literally thousands of wars across the galaxy in a matter of hours. The Bentuzi fleet would not let this stand, but while their power was unmatched by any on the galactic scene, the number of conflicts that arose simply eclipsed the number of ships they had to respond to these crises. In essence, this uprising took advantage of the Bentuzi's inability to be everywhere at once, in order to destabilize their hold on the galaxy. Eventually, the chaos of these conflicts would die down, and a new order would arise. Now, there were several new empires spanning across multiple worlds that were brought into their folds through conquest. With these new players on the galactic board, the Bentuzi were forced to cede to their demands as they had clearly demonstrated their ability to disrupt the trade routes. Their main demand of the Bentuzi was to permit themselves the ability to govern their own affairs. The Bentuzi agreed, and a new union was founded, the Galactic Council, consisting of 16 different unbound empires. Interestingly enough, some theorize that this turn of events was in actuality what the Bentuzi wanted for the peoples of the galaxy, and that this new council was evidence enough to the ancient race that they were more than ready for independence. However, intrigue and conflict would still be a part of this new unity. Two founding empires in particular, the Hagarans and the Taidani, had been in constant argument over a collection of worlds on the border between them. This disagreement would be among the first issues to be solved by the new Galactic Council, as the fighting over these border worlds had not ceased at all since their formation. Not content with simply allowing the Council to reach a decision on their own, the Taidani bribed, blackmailed, and in some extreme cases, 
resorted to assassination to guarantee them a decision that would award the disputed worlds to the Taidan Empire. Which is exactly what happened. Not only were these worlds given to the Taidani, a 30 light year exclusion zone was established between them and the Hagarans. If the forces of Hagar chose to break this agreement, then the consequences for them would be severe. In the face of a galaxy ready to make war upon them if they continued their conflict with the Taidan Empire, the Hagarans had no choice but to abide by the ruling. Fate, however, would soon intervene in the most unpredictable way, and the order of the galaxy would be changed yet again. A second hyperspace core was found by the Hagarans in an uncharted region of space simply known as the Great Wastelands, inside of a massive yet unknown starship wreckage. In time, the Hagaran scientists were able to use the core to unlock for themselves the same far jump capabilities that the Bentusi had enjoyed for so many years. It did not take long for the Diamid, the ruling council of Hagara, to understand the implications of this discovery. With the means to far jump, the Hagaran navy could appear behind Taidan lines without warning and wreak havoc on the Taidani. With the power of their navies now combined with the hyperspace core, not even the council could stop them. The Hagaran engineers outfitted a new flagship with a hyperspace core, and gave it the name of Sajuk's Wrath. Every ship in the navy was then rallied around the Sajuk's Wrath, and together jumped into the Taidani worlds to destroy garrisons and other military positions. The Taidan navy was unable to stop them, of course, as many of their forces were deployed along the border with Hagara, and they were simply unaware that 1. the Hagarans possessed far jump technology, and two, were behind their lines systematically destroying their empire from within. Eventually, word would reach the Taidan homeworld about the Hagaran fleet among them, but by then it was too late. The Hagarans had already positioned themselves in orbit of the planet, and once they had crushed the Taidan elite guard defending their capital world, the Hagaran navy proceeded to bombard the planet and the Imperial Palace specifically for a whole day. When news of this attack reached the Galactic Council, they were, of course, outraged. And mere days after the Sajuk's wrath returned to Hagara, the Council had come to a preliminary decision. The Hagaran Hyperspace Corps would be surrendered to the Council, and their navies would retreat from the disputed worlds. The Hagarans had 24 hours to follow through. If they refused, the full wrath of the Council would be upon them. An emergency meeting was called in the Diamid. There, the Hagaran leadership argued that the power of their navies combined with the far jump abilities of the Second Hyperspace Corps meant that they could simply outpower and outmaneuver anything the council could bring against them. But there was still one race that could effectively challenge them, and a plan was made to take them out of the picture and show to all the power of the Hagaran people. Mere minutes before the council's deadline would pass, the Diamid agreed to the terms provided to them. The core would be surrendered and their fleets would pull out of the border sectors. But with one caveat, the Hagarans would only give up their core to the Bentuzi their explanation being that they were the only race they could trust. The Council, relieved by the 11th hour decision, agreed. The Bentuzi sent their harbor ship to Hagar to collect the core. Coming out of hyperspace, the Bentuzi were surrounded by seemingly inactive Hagaran ships, with the Sajuk's wrath in the center with the hyperspace core exposed for them to take. But as the harbor ship approached, the Hagaran navy came to life and opened fire with everything they had in a bid to cripple the Bentuzi hyperspace core. This Hagaran gamble, of course, did not work. If it had, the course of history would be far different than the one we know. The Bentuzi harbor ship simply outpowered the entire Hagaran fleet through a combination of their powerful technology, fighters, and tactics. The battle lasted for hours, with the Hagaran stubbornly refusing the Bentuzi's pleas for their surrender. Eventually, the once proud Hagaran navy was utterly annihilated from existence, save for the Sajuk's wrath. With their engines crippled and the harbor ship closing in to dock, the ship's commander in a final show of defiance made a short-range jump to Hagara's moon, crash landing on its surface. But this was more than the act of a prideful military leader that had lost everything. Making a jump so close to a gravity well, i.e. suns, planets, carried with it a near guarantee of destroying your own ship due to gravity's destabilizing effect on hyperspace. But the commander bet on this well-known fact, and gambled that the Bentuzi would not follow them because of sad risk. As under normal circumstances, the Bentuzi could follow them if they went anywhere else. So when the Sajuk's wrath jumped out, the Bentuzi simply assumed the Hagaran ship chose death before dishonor by destroying themselves in the hyperspace core. 
Thus, the Hagarans were able to keep the second corps away from the Bentuzi. The Diomed were informed of the commander's contingency plan beforehand, and would simply recover their corps from their moon when the Bentuzi would leave the system. With the total defeat of the Hagaran navy, the Galactic Council allowed the Hagaran people to retain their freedom, on the grounds that they would never prepare for war or make conflict with other sentients. No other sanctions or rulings by the Council were deemed necessary, as the Hagarans, through their own actions, were no longer a dominant power in the galaxy. The Bentuzi, key players in the downfall of the Hagaran people, were incredibly remorseful over their actions, and upon reflection, felt their response was overzealous to the crimes of Hagara. As the oldest race, they realized that they as a people had made several mistakes in their history similar to the Hagarans, so it did not feel right to the collective being of the Bentuzi to simply take away their power, especially as with their second hyperspace core, the Bentuzi could finally have had an equal among the stars. But now, that dream would never be. After an extended period of mourning for the Hagarans, the Bentuzi shocked the council by retracting their military support, along with the demilitarization of their ships, but they would remain as an equal member on the council, which meant that they were essentially stepping down as the leading power in the galaxy. But as one crisis ended, another was soon to begin. The Tidani, deeply angered by the destruction wrought by the Hagarans, rallied under the leadership of one man, an admiral in the Tidan navy named Ristu. With the Imperial leadership gone, he gathered the remaining border fleets and proclaimed himself the sole commander of the entire Tidan navy. Ristu was well known as a hero of the previous war with Hagara, and with the Tidani people crying out for vengeance, they saw no problem in siding with the man who promised to bring them just that. Now, with the decimation of the Hagaran fleet and the withdrawal of the Bentuzi, the time was ripe for an offensive on the Hagarans. The Tidan fleet proceeded to sweep across the Hagaran worlds like vengeful gods. Any planet that refused to serve the Tidan Empire would be annihilated. After the first world was glassed for rejecting their demands, the other Hagaran worlds would surrender in fairly short order. But some would be destroyed anyway, with reasons ranging from, they gave up too soon, meaning that they could not be trusted, or that they waited too long to surrender, which meant that they still held loyalty to Hagara. The Galactic Council demanded that the Taidan stop their wholesale slaughter, but their pleas were ignored. The Bentuzi were petitioned to forcefully stop the Taidan, but with the recent memories of Hagara still fresh in their minds, they refused. However, they did offer to mediate discussions between Admiral Ristu and the Hagar and Diomed. Once talks began, Ristu immediately presented his terms. The annexation of all Hagaran worlds to the Taidan Empire, the taking of Hagara itself as the new Taidani capital world, and following with the execution or enslavement of every native Hagaran. Despite the audacity of these demands, the Hagarans had since become a broken people, and very nearly accepted the terms offered. However, they drew a line at slavery. With their inability to accept this offer, the Hagarans simply awaited their own extinction, as the Taidan navy blazed a path of destruction to their homeworld. But the Bentuzi persisted in their negotiations, and were able to come to a solution that satisfied all parties. Exile. The rest of the Taidani demands would remain the same, but instead of execution or slavery for the Hagarans, they would be sent to a remote desert world far beyond civilized space in the Outer Rim where they would have the opportunity to rebuild their lives as long as they did not pursue far-jump hyperspace technology. If the Hagarans were found beyond their planet with a hyperspace core, they as a people would be doomed. Between exile and extinction, the Diomed chose the former. Forced to board sublight transports for their long journey to the Outer Rim, the Hagarans managed to smuggle their hyperspace core, which had since been recovered from the wreckage of Sajuk's wrath on Hagara's moon. And thus, as the Hagarans began their dangerous journey, they carried with them the faintest of hopes that maybe one day, they could return and take back their homeworld. <laughs>